Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I am here today with another one of my comparison videos. And so I have the new Samyang AF 85 millimeter f1.4 series two lens, and I am putting it up against what I consider to be the most natural competitor on the Sony platform. And in some ways, the most similarly priced and in terms of features and performance, and that is the Sigma 85 millimeter f1.4 DN lens. This lens is one that I own personally. I like it a lot. I also really like the Samyang and I have thorough reviews of both of these lenses in which I gave them both a very, very positive review. So today we're going to take a look at reasons to choose either one of those lenses. And fortunately, I don't think that there's a bad choice here, but maybe I can give you a few areas for you to consider of what might be the better lens for you in your particular situation. Now, just so you know, I will give you a quick list of reasons to choose Samyang, reasons to choose Sigma, but if you want a little bit more, I'll give you a little bit of a deeper dive into the image quality comparison at the end of the video if you want to hang around and take a look at that. So let me give you a few of the reasons to choose the Samyang here. Uh, first of all, Samyang is considerably cheaper, price point of $799 US dollars coming to market, whereas the Sigma is $1,199, and so about a $400 difference between the two. That's obviously significant, making the Sigma about 50% more if you want to look at it in that way. The Samyang is also lighter and a little bit slimmer. It is 115 grams lighter. It has a 72 millimeter rather than a 77 millimeter front filter thread. And also one area that the, the lenses themselves, the bare lenses, there isn't a whole lot of difference between the two. Um, when it comes to the actual size. And uh, there's a different size in lens caps here. And so if, if I remove those lens caps, the difference in size becomes even more, more apparent. And so the Samyang is uh, just a little bit longer, but it's also a little bit narrower. But if you take these lens hoods into, uh, into the consideration, the S S Sigma lens hood is rather huge. You can see that I can tuck the Samyang lens hood right up inside there. Um, it's just really, really quite wide. And so as a byproduct, if you're carrying the lens with the lens hood, say reverse for storage like this, this takes up a fair bit more room in your actual bag than what the Samyang does. And so maybe if space is tight, that might be a consideration for you. When it comes to the optical performance, one area where the Samyang does have a couple of clear advantages, and that is when it comes to distortion and vignette. This Samyang has almost nil distortion. It is, I, I used a minus one to correct a tiny amount of pincushion distortion, whereas the Sigma has a quite pronounced amount of pincushion distortion that required a minus 11 to correct, and it actually did show up in real world shots if left uncorrected to where I could see a, you know, a bow in either horizon or a straight line. Also, when it comes to vignette, the Samyang has much less vignette. It has about two stops of vignette in the corner, requiring a plus 53 to manually correct, whereas the Sigma maxed out the sliders. So, you know, at least four stops of vignette, and I had to put in a, a value of 100 to try to manually correct for that. And so, uh, when some of those, those basic attributes, certainly the Samyang has less to correct for than what the Sigma, though the Sigma has an advantage the Samyang doesn't, that I'll get to in just a moment. The Samyang does have the ability to tweak some of the functionality of the lens via their lens station. Now, I will note that that is an additional accessory that's going to cost you 50 or 60 bucks, but you can do easily do firmware updates through that. But you can also tweak things like uh, how fast the ring is going to work, the custom operation of the uh, this custom switch here, how that's going to function, a few other things that you can tweak as a part of that, whereas Sigma has no equivalent functionality. The Samyang at very wide apertures has a very slight, uh, very last bit of the edge performance than what the Sigma does, and very slightly better small aperture performance than what the Sigma does. And by that I mean stop down to f5.6, f8, smaller apertures like that. So there are a few reasons to choose the Samyang. How about the Sigma? Well, the Sigma, though both lenses I would say now are nicely built, I do have a slight bit more trust 
for the Sigma and its build quality. I've owned this lens for a couple of, of years now. It's very durable and tough, and it has served me well. And in terms of the actual feel of construction, it feels very slightly higher quality. It also has a, a feature that I would like, that I like, that Samyang does not, and that is that it does have a dedicated uh, aperture ring here. And as a byproduct of that, it has the ability not only for to have the aperture ring, but it has the ability to declick the aperture, which you know could be a valuable function for some people. The Samyang, you can uh, you know make the manual focus ring operate as an aperture ring, but it doesn't have a dedicated aperture ring. The Sigma shows higher contrast uh, consistently at f1.4. It has a little bit more punch at a very wide apertures between f1.4 and f2, where the advantage basically equals out between the two. I also thought, considering that it had uh, you know higher contrast, that it would, maybe wouldn't have quite as soft a bokeh. But in some ways, the bokeh is just as smooth. If and in some situations, it's a little bit better. And by that, I mean uh, there is less deformation of the image in terms of the circular shape along the edge of the frame on the Sigma than what there is on the Samian. The advantage that I uh, pointed out when it comes to vignette and distortion uh, that Sigma has that Samyang does not is that Sigma enjoys full profile support on your Sony camera, which means that while there, there is some more aberrations there, they're actually corrected in camera for JPEGs and video, whereas the Samyang is not. Now, fortunately, Samyang has lower um, you know, things to correct for to begin with, so I didn't find it to be as huge of a deal in real world, but it might be a factor for you. And so the uh, Sigma has a little bit more native support. At the end of the day, as pointed out, both of these lenses are really excellent choices. I don't think there's a bad choice here, but I do think that there are slightly different choices. And so if you would like more information on either lens or buying links, you can find those in the description down below. And if you want to take a look at uh, some image quality breakdown with me, stay tuned right after this. I'm Dustin Abbott, and uh, as always, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and let the light in. So let's take a look at breaking down the various aspects of image quality and performance here. So first of all, when it comes to vignette and distortion, uh, obviously I tested the Sigma a few years ago, so a slightly different chart, but I think you can see the pretty vast difference between the two lenses. The Samyang, when it comes to uh, distortion, distortion is basically non-existent. It's almost perfectly corrected in that regard. And you can see that the Sigma, on the other hand, has quite extreme pincushion distortion, uh, the strongest that I've actually personally seen on an 85 millimeter lens. And that was one of the compromises that I assumed had to do with uh, the compact size, though as we've seen, the Samyang is basically the same size at this point. You can also see that there is a significantly higher vignette. So to achieve this manually corrected result, you can see I've dialed in a minus one of pincushion distortion to correct the pincushion distortion, though, frankly, that's not enough for you to hardly see any difference. As far as vignette, about two stops, a plus 53 to get a nice even performance. Now for the Sigma to correct here, I had to do a minus 11 and, you know, you could probably correct it even a hair further and then a plus 100 to eliminate the vignette which obviously is maxing out the slider so as you can see there's maybe just the slightest bit of um of vignette left there in the corners and so a significant difference there so we're going to take a look at resolution performance. This is on a 50 megapixel Sony Alpha 1 and shown at 200% magnification. Samyang is going to be on the left for these comparisons. So both of these are extremely sharp lenses, but you can see that the Sigma is a, an obvious winner when it comes to wide open contrast, which is really uh, significantly stronger in the center of the frame. Not quite as pronounced in the mid-frame, though certainly it is the stronger and crisper looking there in the mid-frame. Pop down here and look at Winston Churchill's face, and you can definitely see that. It's not just the kind of sharpness of the textures, but you can see that there's more variance between the shadow and the highlight areas. Looking down here into the corner, we can see that depending on where you look, like at this stage, resolution is about similar. Um, just maybe a little bit more detail for the Samyang in the corner, but as you pan here towards the edge, you can see that the Samyang retains a better result. And that may be in part because uh, Sigma is having to correct, whereas Samyang is basically not having to correct much there. Now, if you stop down to f2.8, that a contrast advantage largely disappears. And I would argue that if anything, in the center of the frame, the Samyang is 
possibly crisper looking, at least in terms of what I'm seeing here in the moir pattern and uh, just general contrast here. It might be ever so slightly uh, higher contrast than what the uh, Sigma is. And so you can see that that advantage, you know, has basically dissipated. They're very, very close in the mid frame. I'm going to say that the Sigma is very possibly slightly better and off here in the corner performance is quite similar um, very little difference to distinguish between the two looking over here we can see that that contrast advantage that we saw for the uh, sigma wide open is is largely lost here and they look quite similar in terms of performance you move off to the very edge of the frame and that's really that's just there's not really enough of a difference to tell between the two of them they're both just extremely extremely strong so if we stop on down to f5.6, we can see that the Samian continues to be a little bit stronger in the center of the frame, just a little bit more pop there. In the mid frame, we can see that now I would say the Samian is ever so slightly better. So maybe just a little bit more in the tank than what the Sigma has. However, I would say here down in the corner, the Sigma has definitely caught up and even surpassed the Samyang in terms of corner performance. It's looking really fantastic there. We look over here at uh, Winston Churchill. He looks fantastic, you know, a handsome dude there between, looks great on both lenses and the queen here over in the corner, uh, looking very crisp. But again, I think just the corners, I very slightly give an advantage to the Sigma. So advantage for the Samyang in the center and then in the corner uh, for the Sigma. So basically they have reverse position. So how about if we move to a three-dimensional object? And so here in this shot, you can see that both of them are framing pretty much the same at uh, 85 millimeters. So a very similar performance there. Um, if we zoom into 100% magnification here, we can see that at f1.4, they're both, I mean, that, that's a fantastic performance from both of them at f1.4. I do think that textures are very slightly better on the Sigma, which is here on the right. You can see in just some of these areas, just a little bit better. But also, as we take a look at the geometric deformation, Sigma is just a little bit rounder in terms of the bokeh quality over on this side. And so I would give a slight edge for Sigma in this shot. Though, as you can see, they're both, you know, really quite good. One more here, obviously a very high contrast subject here. And so here looking in at this white pawn, we can see that both of them again, look very good. Sigma looks ever so slightly better. And I think that the Samyang has a very slight bit of fringing that the Sigma is more neutral in. If we look towards the bokeh and the defocused area, you know, frankly, I don't see a lot to distinguish between the two lenses in this particular shot. I mean, if I were to tell you that this was the same lens side by side, just showing you this, I don't know that you would be able to contest that very much. So very similar performance. One other thing that's interesting here, and that's kind of a trend, is that it used to be that Samyang always was kind of known for having warm glass, not very color neutral. But as you can see in these shots, and you can just kind of watch for it as we move ahead, that's really not the case. And I think that's one thing that has been tweaked in these Series 2 lenses, is that uh, now Samyang has given us a little bit more neutral color glass. So I really noticed that kind of standing out in these portrait shots. So if you look at them just kind of, uh, you know, globally here, you would argue that probably the Sigma is slightly warmer than what the Samyang is. But there's, I just, what I mostly noticed is that there really wasn't a lot of difference between the two. However, what I did notice is that contrast difference that really shows up with portrait subjects. And so I'll kind of match these up as far as centering them. And so, uh, you know, looked at globally, you couldn't tell much of a difference. But if you zoom in here to a pixel level, you can just see that there's a lot more detail and just a little bit more kind of brightness and pop, like say to the eyes and around that area. In this hair area, textures are crisper, whereas they're just a little bit more muted on the Samyang by comparison. Now, whether or not that's an advantage or a disadvantage, that's really going to be kind of determined by you and what you're looking for in a portrait lens. Some people want all that detail and then they can, you know, kind of blur it down if they want. Some people want, you know, just a little less um, sharpness on subjects in that. Now, looking at the overall bokeh rendering here, uh, frankly, there's not a massive amount of difference between the two. And you can see if we're looking in this area, I don't really see enough to uh, call it one direction or the other. Uh, this kind of more, you know, d definite object here. Um, it's again, I'll let you determine for yourself. I don't see a major difference between the two. Here's another one at uh, f1.4 here. So again, uh, similar type shot and uh, I'll line them up again. 
You can see the same basic trend though, that there's just more texture information there from the Sigma. And if we look at, we have some more obvious uh, out of focus things here. So I'll let you look at that. I would say I would give the Sigma a slight edge here. I think that there's just a little bit more edging on the Samyang relative to the Sigma, which is, you know, has a, just a little less jittery there. And I would say a little bit smoother. So here at f2.8, and uh, here I, I think the general trend is basically the same. Um, both of them are very sharp, but the Sigma is just a little bit crisper. And again, if you look at the contrast in the hair, um, it just, to me, it shows off a little bit better than what the Samyang does. As far as the bokeh quality at f2.8, I don't see as much of a difference. I would argue that maybe the Samyang is slightly softer looking as you start to uh, stop the lens down a little bit. And uh, and so it gives maybe a slightly better performance than what the Sigma does. You look at this as just a little bit le less outlining than what we see there. So you can really see that there's some give and take in performance in some of these metrics. So here we go at F2. And so just to give you another aperture type comparison. So looking at the uh, foreground here, um, we can see that there's a little bit of a swirl of uh, effect kind of on the Samyang, whereas the the Sigma is just kind of a, more of a kind of a planar type gradual thing. Uh, again, bokeh is a subjective measure. I, I've always kind of been partial to the swirl look myself, but you know, your mileage may vary on that. As far as our general trends on the subject, um, you can see that, yeah, I, same kind of general trend that the, um, there's a there's just better contrast in terms of that pop on the sigma you can also see that as far as as color warmth um the the samyang is is performing very very neutral here without having any kind of of warmth to it you know kind of standing out and in this particular shot i like the sigma a little bit better at f2 than what i do on the samyang which seems just a hair busier all right, so one final comparison in here i have you know stuck a foreground object here and kind of you know framed the subject behind a little bit just to kind of give you a look at foreground bokeh and so as you can see you know both of them are rendering the foreground really nicely there and as far as the you know the general trend on the subject same kind of thing just the sigma textures again they just pop a little bit more that's something that sigma has done really really well on their 85 millimeter f1.4 dn the samyang is still very very sharp it's just in comparison the sigma shows off is just be a little bit sharper and i think that you know here just a little bit rounder bokeh circles that give me a little bit of an advantage for the sigma of course, if we were to look at just one of these and, and take a look at that, you'd say, oh, that's really, really sharp, looks really, really crisp, the bokeh looks really nice. End of the day, these are both incredible lenses, both with some strengths and both with some weaknesses.